Hi everybody. I am going to talk about the mental illness and social rehabilitation. Mental illness is not a new term in the world of disability. It is seen that a person who is suffering from a severe mental illness is often unable to perform even daily routine activities. To overcome this condition, psychosocial rehabilitation is a good option along with the medical aid. Psychosocial rehabilitation is a process to restore social functioning and well-being of a person who is suffering from mental illness. Appropriate strategies are required to manage the psychosocial rehabilitation in the area of mental illness. Community participation is necessary for the success of psychosocial rehabilitation. At the end of this talk, you will gain an adequate knowledge about disability arising out of mental illness and its features, know about psychosocial rehabilitation, get a glimpse into the historical aspect and magnitude of the problem, understand the existing provision of services for the mentally ill, and learn the strategies of psychosocial rehabilitation of persons with mental illness. Let me explain the meaning of mental illness and disability. The Persons with Disabilities Act 1995 has included mental illnesses in its ambit of the definition of disability. According to this act, mental illness means mental disorder other than mental retardation. Mental illness is a term that describes a wide range of mental and emotional conditions. Mental illnesses causing disability are prolonged and chronic in nature. Now they are known as severe mental illnesses which require psychosocial rehabilitation and they include chronic schizophrenia, long-standing bipolar illness, persisting depression, delusional disorder and dementia. Disability arising out of severe mental illness is also known as psychiatric disability. This disability is defined as a substantial limitation in a major life activity. World Health Organization defines this disability as an inability to participate or perform at a socially desirable level in such activities as self-care, social relationship, work and socially appropriate behavior. Let me describe the clinical characteristics of psychiatric disability. Persons with severe mental illness vary greatly in many respects depending on age, gender, education, profession, income, socio-cultural background, assessment and other factors. They do, however, have a number of features in common. These common features are categorized into three groups of handicapping factors, namely intrinsic, extrinsic and secondary factors. Let me mention about these three categories one by one. First, intrinsic factors. Intrinsic factors consist of continuing psychiatric symptoms that are part of the illness itself, that is, thought disorder, delusions, and psychomotor retardation. One to two thirds of discharged chronic schizophrenic persons is significantly disabled by psychiatric symptoms. Second, Extrinsic factors include pre-morbid handicaps such as lack of social or vocational skills, 
and intellectual or physical disabilities. A number of researchers have concluded that 20 to 50 percent of severely mentally ill persons have no friends and only very few persons have any significant community involvement. Those who are married and employed or who have an active social life are much less likely to join the ranks of persons with a severe mental illness. Even when they do enter this category, they tend to function at a higher level than those who are single, unemployed or socially isolated. Third, the secondary factors represent maladaptive reactions to the illness rather than being part of the illness itself and include loss of self-esteem, low self-confidence, helplessness and passivity. Let me explain the prominent severe mental illnesses, namely chronic schizophrenia and bipolar affective disorder which are primarily more prominent and covered under the psychosocial rehabilitation of severely mentally ill. Clinical characteristics of prolonged schizophrenic illness or chronic schizophrenia are chronic deteriorating course and disorganized behavior like violence, inappropriate affect, self-neglect, wandering and thought disorder. From the management point of view, symptoms of schizophrenia are categorized into two groups. These are positive symptoms and negative symptoms. Positive symptoms signify an excess or distortion of normal functions. Negative symptoms are more difficult to treat and are more disabling than positive symptoms. Bipolar affective personality disorder often occurs in the form of episodes with intervening periods of normalcy and improvement. Further, cyclic episodes of mania and depression intermittently affect the victim. Phase of mania is characterized by elation euphoria, overactivity, grandiosity, decreased need for sleep and interfering behavior. During the phase of depression, one suffers depressed mood, psychomotor retardation, hopelessness, lack of energy and decreased appetite and sleep. Mild symptoms, irritability, mood fluctuations and psychosocial dysfunction are some of the features seen during the intervening periods. A typical severely mentally ill person might be expected to have assessment of schizophrenia or major affective psychosis at least two admissions in the last year or six months and significant problems of functioning in at least two of these areas such as basic literacy, self-care, financial support including money management, lack of social support, lack of occupation or employment, and difficulties with close relationships. In addition, they are likely to show poor compliance with the prescribed medication, some degree of drug or alcohol abuse, difficulties in sustaining follow-up and aftercare, frequent crises and readmissions, and significant history of self-harm, self-neglect or harm to others. Let me discuss about the psychosocial rehabilitation. Psychosocial rehabilitation is a process that facilitates the opportunity for the individuals who are impaired, disabled or handicapped by a mental disorder to reach their optimal level of independent functioning. Psychosocial rehabilitation aims to provide the optimal level of functioning of individuals and societies and minimization of disabilities and handicaps, stressing individuals' choices on how to live successfully in the community. Mental health experts and organizations have outlined goals, values, and principles of psychosocial rehabilitation. 
Let me summarize the goals, values and guiding principles. The goals are recovery from mental illness, integration in the family and community and better quality of life. Recovery from mental illness is a basic prerequisite of psychosocial rehabilitation in terms of symptom management. Compliance with medication plays an important role with the support of family and treating psychiatrist. Non-compliance of medication retards the process of psychosocial rehabilitation. Integration in the family and community is a prominent goal to be achieved with all the efforts of psychosocial rehabilitation. Integration of person with a severe mental illness in the family and community is a key determinant in the success of psychosocial rehabilitation. Better quality of life needs to be ensured at par with the members of the family and community through psychosocial rehabilitative services being rendered to the person with a severe mental illness. Rehabilitation professionals follow certain values which facilitate the achievement of goals in integrating the person with a severe mental illness in the family and in ensuring his or her better quality of life. These values are self-determination, dignity and worth of every individual, capacity of every individual to learn and grow, and cultural sensitivity. The important guiding principles of psychosocial rehabilitation are individualization of services, maximum involvement and due importance to be given to preferences and choices of person with a severe mental illness, normalized and community-based services, focus on the positive potentials of the person in terms of cognition, emotion, motor activity level and social interaction of person, assessment of the psychosocial milieu of the person such as family setup, workplace, social living conditions and so on, clinical intervention or treatment, rehabilitation and integration through holistic approach, ongoing accessible and coordinated services, focus on the development of life skills, social skills and vocational skills, environmental modification support, involvement of the family of the person with a mental illness, and evaluative assessment with outcome focus. Let me discuss about the historical perspective of psychosocial rehabilitation of the severely mentally ill. Curative efforts have usually remained the focus of countries mental health services in the post-independence era, although scanty efforts have been made in another priority area of psychosocial rehabilitation of severely mentally ill persons. Early mental health services were centered on the mental hospitals of the country, which have gone through various or nearly four to five phases of development. Clinical management of the mentally ill was a primary concern of these hospitals. Experiences are suggestive of the fact that a person suffering from mental illness is not brought to the mental hospitals until and unless his or her problems become dramatic and unmanageable. Thus, admission to mental hospitals was considered to be a forced choice as a last resort. Due to stigma attached to mental illness prior to this admission, family used to make all possible efforts to manage the problem of mentally ill member with the help of local faith healers and doctors. Further, stigma plays a significant role to the extent that in majority of mental hospitals it was observed that clients continue to stay even after recovery due to non-acceptance by their families. This resulted in reduced availability of active treatment beds. The history of psychosocial rehabilitation 
can be traced back to community mental health movement in the West, which strongly emphasized deinstitutionalization of clients in late 1950s and 1960s. It was done to promote community-based management and encourage aftercare programs to facilitate clients to function optimally in the community. Some positive efforts of this nature were also reported at that time in India, which were considered as a landmark in this direction. In 1950s, Professor Dr. Vidya Sagar, a psychiatrist from Rotak, involved family members in the treatment of mentally ill persons in 900 bedded hospitals. This helped in reducing the hostility of the clients towards their families, making day-to-day -day improvement distinctly visible to the relatives and reducing stigma attached to mental illness during those days. The efforts of Professor Dr. Vidya Sagar were able to prove that treatment of mental illness using drugs alone is inadequate. Other psychosocial approaches are also needed to manage. These approaches will enable a person who is suffering from chronic mental illness to function optimally and to live in the community successfully. Sooner than later, the emphasis of Government of India shifted from mental hospital to creation of psychiatric departments in general hospitals and medical schools. The growth and development of these psychiatric units in general hospitals brought about a significant change in the mental health services of the country. This was referred to as a major revolution, the whole approach to psychiatric treatment. There was a greater acceptance of these units as a method of mental health delivery system. This also facilitated to a greater extent training of mental health professionals and research work. A number of advantages of psychiatric units in general hospitals over traditional mental hospitals were able to prepare a foreground for the development of psychosocial rehabilitation services of the country. Some of the stated advantages of these services are that they are located in the community and hence they are easily accessible and approachable. Family and relatives can visit the client and also a relative or family member can stay with the patient. There is no legal restrictions for admission or treatment. Availability of other medical facilities in the same setup that reduced the stigma are some of the encouraging advantages that promoted psychosocial rehabilitation of the people in the family and community. However, a well-formulated national mental health program is still elusive on account of number of reasons. At the government level, policymakers have not been able to devote serious attention to the development of rehabilitative services for the chronic mental ill primarily due to economic constraints. Mental health professionals themselves have been complacent to some extent regarding the formulation of new policy and development of services. Let me state the magnitude of the problem. Increase in the number of persons suffering from chronic mental illness has drawn the attention of professionals and the state to the needs of this segment of population. Professionals felt that this population has remained a neglected lot and now action-oriented efforts are needed to manage and rehabilitate them. According to one estimate in 1997, nearly 300,000 and 105,000 persons of schizophrenia are added in a year in rural and urban population of the country respectively. Out of these, 40 to 60 percent of persons go through the phase of chronicity and suffer impairment and disabilities. 
These figures suggest that roughly 150,000 or more people suffering from schizophrenia are added every year to the country's pool of disabled schizophrenic population. A meta-analysis of 13 epidemiological studies report a prevalence rate of 2.7% for affective disorder which signifies urgent need to develop rehabilitation services for people suffering from chronic mental illness. These figures give an estimate that there will be approximately 2 million persons suffering from schizophrenia in the country at any given point of time. Overall reported prevalence and the incidence figures suggest immediate need for psychosocial rehabilitation both in the urban and the rural areas with a nationwide service network to help people in the community suffering from chronic mental illness. Let me describe the present scenario. Looking into the three areas namely service, availability of manpower and research, it is evident that psychosocial rehabilitation has just been touched upon and many priority areas are still unexplored in the Indian context. Formulation of precise functional definition and quantification of psychiatric disability is still in the process. Some of the facts regarding the status of chronically mental ill in India are roughly 0.5 to 1.5% of the population will have certain disability due to chronic mental illness. Barring a few thousand, all others are living in the community. They are occupationally impaired. Their family and personal life is in shambles. Most of these persons are either maltreated or untreated. There are roughly 35,000 psychiatrists and most of them are concentrated in large towns or in big institutions. Most non-governmental psychiatrists are working single-handed ignoring multidisciplinary approach. Almost all major towns have one to two psychiatrists yet many cities remain uncovered. Only a few hundred non-medical mental health professionals are available which include clinical psychologists, psychiatric social workers and psychiatric nurses. There are roughly 35,000 hospital beds, most of which are poorly managed and are often occupied by chronically ill. Treatment being completely voluntary, most persons seek treatment on outpatient basis and discontinue treatment when active symptoms are controlled or when they do not get adequate response or due to disabling side effects of drugs. Most psychiatrists depend on pharmacotherapy. Attempts at psychoeducation and rehabilitation are generally limited to occasional verbal advice. Many become homeless or live in their own house but uncared and their properties are misappropriated by their relatives. However, there are a few centers of excellence doing commendable work in developing research data and models for treatment and most of these groups are active in a few cities of India. Let me outline the strategies of management in psychosocial rehabilitation. Some of the strategies which are important in the management in psychosocial rehabilitation are pharmacotherapy, developing and applying measures to assess the effectiveness of medication, intervention with the cognitive techniques directly to remedy cognitive and behavioral deficits, developing and applying measures to assess both the stress experienced by individuals and availability of the internal and external resources available to cope with the stress, intervening to correct the deficits observed through functional assessment, 
intervention to provide information about the nature, etiology and treatment of mental illness to the family members, also known as psychoeducation, promoting advocacy and community participation to ensure family care which is the best care for rehabilitation and providing off-way homes where counseling services, skill training projects and facilities for vocational training are available. The psychiatric social worker plays a key role in the rehabilitation process of persons with mental illness along with the coordination and reports given by the multidisciplinary team. The psychiatric social worker needs to be registered with the Rehabilitation Council of India in the central register under the Rehabilitation Social Worker to qualify for working in the rehabilitation sector under the Persons with Disabilities Act 1995. Let me sum up. Psychosocial rehabilitation is a process to restore social functioning and well-being of a person who is suffering from mental illness. Early mental health services were centered on the mental hospitals of the country which have gone through various phases of development. Clinical management of the mentally ill person was a primary concern of these hospitals. Eventually, the emphasis of Government of India shifted from mental hospital to creation of psychiatric departments in general hospitals and medical schools. The growth and development of these psychiatric units in general hospitals brought a significant change in the mental health services of the country. According to an estimate, there will be an approximately 2 million persons suffering from schizophrenia in the country at any given point of time. Formulation of precise functional definition and quantification of psychiatric disability is still in the process. Overall reported prevalence and incidence figures suggest immediate need for psychosocial rehabilitation both in the urban and rural areas with a nationwide service network to help people in the community suffering from chronic mental illness. Strategies of management in psychosocial rehabilitation include pharmacotherapy, developing and applying measures to assess the effectiveness of medication, intervention with the cognitive techniques directly to remedy cognitive and behavioral deficits, developing and applying measures to assess both the stress experienced by individuals and availability of the internal and external resources to cope with the stress, intervening to correct the deficits observed through functional assessment, intervention to provide information about the nature, etiology and treatment of mental illness to the family members, also known as psychoeducation, promoting advocacy and community participation to ensure family care, which is the best care for rehabilitation and providing off-way homes where counseling services, skill training projects and facilities for vocational training are available. A psychiatric social worker plays a key role in the rehabilitation process of persons with mental illness along with the coordination and reports given by the multidisciplinary team. Let me sign off now and hope to see you in another session. Thank you.